Hello all, in today's session of operating system, we'll be moving on to the next topic where we'll be dealing with a technique known as paging. So for, we'll see what is actually a paging in operating system is. The topics which we'll be covering in today's class is about your basic method, hardware support, the protection required and the shared pages. Relate. All these topics are related to your paging concept. Now, we have already seen in the previous uh, session or previous operating system class where the we have gone for contiguous memory allocation. So, when we are going for contiguous memory allocation, we had a problem of uh, internal fragmentation when I was going for fixed allocation. So, to overcome that particular problem, we have gone for variable or dynamic allocation where we wanted to overcome this internal fragmentation, but we got a problem of external fragmentation. And for external fragmentation also, we could identify a method which was compaction. So compaction was used to overcome this external fragmentation, but that too to some extent and it has its own advantages and disadvantages. So other than these methods, they have found out another alternative which is non-contiguous memory allocation. So instead of allocating the total process at a time, we divide the process and allocate it to the memory. So in that case, we go for using a technique known as paging. So that is the basic need why we actually go for paging. Now when you see this particular paging concept, we have a main memory or we have a secondary memory. So main memory will be divided into parts and that we will be calling it as frames. And your secondary memory will also be divided into parts, we call it as a page. And here we can even divide a process into parts and each of this process part we can even call it as a page. And the size of this particular page and size of the frame both are to be of same size. So when you just see this example, this is a particular process which has been divided into eight pages. So the secondary memory page division, we can even call it as a process can be divided into pages or secondary memory can also be divided into pages or logical memory can also be divided into pages. Any of the terms can be used interchangeably. So here the process is divided into eight pages and these eight pages, if I want a process to be executed, where the process should be present onto your main memory and what are these things known as frames. So main memory is divided into frames, so indicating that the page has to be loaded into the frame for its execution to take place and we'll see in uh, detail about each one of them. Now. When you go for this uh, basic method of paging here, we are to be very much very clear about two addresses. One we call it as logical addresses related to your secondary memory where you have two parts of it. One is your page number, the other is your page offset. So page offset here is nothing but uh, it deals with your displacement. How many instructions or how many bytes from the current locations. Similarly, physical address is related to your main memory where you have a frame number plus your offset. Now our job is to map this logical address. So this is your logical address and this is your physical address. So ultimately when you want the data, it has to be uh, from your main memory, right? Or your secondary memory. Now CPU will be generating an address which is called as a logical address and it is a combination of page number and the displacement. So this page number using this page number, where are these pages stored onto your frame? So this particular page number will be an input to your page table. This is a data structure which we'll be using. And here we'll get the frame number out of it. So our P will be an input and F will be an output. And that F along with your displacement D will form your physical address. And finally you get the, so here you get your frame. And finally the data will be you will be able to get the data from your main memory. So if you want the data from the main memory, it is a combination of frame and the displacement. So you are getting your frame from the page table. So frame plus your displacement directly, you will get the data. So this is a way you access the data from logical address to a physical address. Now, in order to go for this particular thing, what are all the things I have to maintain? First of all, you have to maintain a logical uh, memory. You have to have a page table and you need to even have a physical memory. So when you want a data, so if you want a page, so for page one is present in your logical memory. So first it will interact with the page table. So page one is present in which, so this becomes your page number. 
and this is nothing but your frame number so these two put together we call it as a page table so i'll get the page number try to get the frame number out of it too and when i am able to know which is what is the frame that is present here you directly go to that particular frame in the main memory and try to access the page so this is how you access a page from the physical memory and you are able to map your logical address with your physical address now Coming to the continuation of your basic method here, as we have seen, you have your logical address, which is a capable of page number and your page offset. And here M minus N bits are used for your page number and N bits are used for your page offset, where M indicates the number of bits for your logical address and N indicates the number of bits for your page size. So depending on your page size and the logical address, you are designating your page number and your page offset. We'll just see an example here. I assume this is your logical memory and this is your physical memory and you have your page table here. Now, these are your pages. So this is your page P0, P1, P2 and P3. And each page is capable of storing how many bytes of memory here? It is capable of storing four bytes of words. So four bytes of words are stored. And here we have taken an example of a physical memory which is of 32 bytes. So uh, each one is capable of storing 4 bytes. And how many frames you are having here once? So if I go for counting it as 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So when I take a cumulative number, it is 8, right? 8 frames into 4 put together 32. Now we'll see how the address, actual address is mean mapped. Now will you go for logical address 3. So what is your logical address here 3. So logical address is 3 which belongs to your page 0. And where is your page 0 stored in which particular frame 5. So just see the calculation part. So logical address 3 is nothing but page 0. And what is the displacement here? First displacement, second and third. So we'll calculate the displacement as 0, 1, 2. So here you are at 3. So the displacement is 3. So logical address is page 0 and offset 3. And when you want to see where is page 0 stored in frame 5. So 5 into what is the size of your uh, page here 4 bytes. So 5 into 4 plus 3 it is nothing but 20 plus 3 23. So when you just see 21, 22 and 23. So 20, 21, 22 and 23. So where is the value of it? D. So D is being stored in your physical address of 23. So this is 21, 22 and 23. We'll just take another example. Logical address 4. Logical address 4 is this. Uh, I want this. So what is the page number here? Page number is 1, no doubt. What is the offset in page 1? You are at first starting location, right? So the offset value is 0. So where is your page 1 stored in which particular frame 6? So 6 into what is the number of bytes or words in each page 4 bytes plus what is your offset value 0? So 24 this E value. So when you just see this E value will be stored in this particular 24 location. So this is how you go for calculating. Now we even need to take care of the free frames. Now I assume you have these pages. And the, this is a new process which has four pages. Now you want these pages to be stored onto your frame. And this is this part is your before allocation. And this you have only the list of frames that are available. So what you do is since you are able to get this list of free frames, page 0 will be dumped into 14th frame. See here. And page 1 will be dumped into page 30, frame 13. Next page. Page 2 will be dumped into 18. Page 2 to 18. Page 3 will be dumped into 20, 20. So the out of all the five frames, which frame is uh, left out here, you have only one frame which is free. So this gives you the free frames that are available. Now, now we'll see how to actually, so for the, all these things to take place, the major role is being played by your page table. Why? Because this acts as an intermediary to map your logical address with your physical address. So where do you actually store this page table? Page table can be stored in the registers, right? But the advantage of storing this in the register, it is a faster access. But the problem is the number of entries in the page table increases as the process size increases. So when the process size increases, page table entries will also increase and you require more number of registers, which is not practically possible. 
So we move on to the second method where we store the data or the page table into your main memory. But when you store it in your main memory, it requires two memory access. How do two memory access? First, based on the page number, we'll identify a frame number. And once this is one memory access and once you identify a frame number, go to that particular location and get the data from physical memory. So here you require two memory access, which is not always possible. So to access each of the page, you require two memory access, which is not always possible. So to overcome that particular problem, we go on to the next method where you maintain the page table in the form of a catch or catchy memory, or we call it as associative memory. Now we'll see. Now just see this here. So here we'll maintain a separate table, which is nothing but a translation look a side buffer. Translation look a side buffer. So here the CPU will generate a logical address, which is a combination of your page number and your displacement. So this page number will be first checked with the TLB, translation look aside buffer. Based on the page number, you, are, you will be able to get a frame number. And if that particular page is present in the TLB, we call it as a TLB hit. And this particular frame number along with the displacement will form your physical address. You go for actually fetching up your data. Assume a case where that you are want to find a particular page whose frame number is, but the entry is not present in the TLB. So in that case, you go for TLB miss, access the data from the actual page table and then go for accessing the data of physical memory and later on. You see that the same entry, whichever was not present, you add it up into your TLB. And in the TLB, if you are not able to find the empty location or you don't have any entry which is empty, you go for replacement. And normally we go for using an approach known as LRU, least recently used. If a page is being found in the cache memory, and since there is also a limit on the number of entries in the TLB, because if this is also a cache memory and you only use it for fast access. Now, uh, here, when you go for your hardware support, as I told you, TLB uh, misses nothing, but you are not able, if a page is being found in the TLB, you call this as a, sorry, this is a mistake here. So you call this as a TLB hit. So when you go for your TLB hit, you want to know the amount of time that is being spent. So if a page is been, and uh, what is the nanoseconds that is required? 100 nanoseconds for search and 100 nanoseconds for access. So if you have a miss, if a page is present, 120 nanoseconds, 20 seconds for searching and 100 seconds for uh, accessing the memory. So 120 nanoseconds are for miss and uh, 220 for your uh, hit. Uh, sorry, this is for your hit. I'm um, once again sorry and this is for your miss. So if miss you have to go for first you're not able to search it in TLB. It is not found in TLB. You have to even check it in your page table. So how many times you need to do it here? You have to access your memory twice. So that is the reason you go for 200. So when you want to calculate the effective hit ratio, it is nothing but 80% is your hit ratio. 0 0.80 into the miss value or uh, sorry hit value. And 0 0.8 out of 800%, 20% is for this. And what is the amount of uh, nanoseconds you require when there is a miss 200? Then this would be your effective access time. Now, uh, we have seen a page table where you have a frame number and the associated page number. So this is your page number and associated frame number. So these are your, your page numbers, right? So in the page table, additional to the, your frame number, you can even store a bit known as valid or invalid bit. So you want to protect your data. If you are trying to access the page which is not present in your main memory. So how do you know that the page is not present in the uh, main memory. It is not yet brought into your memory. For that, we go for using a bit known as valid or invalid bit. So this page, for example, page 0. So page 0 is present in which frame? Frame 2. Since it is present, we go for valid bit as 1. So valid bit can also be indicated as 1 and uh, you have another bit which is 0, which can be of invalid bit. Now when you go for page 6, page 6 is not yet present in that. So when you go for seeing these pages, how many pages are there? Page 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Page 6 is not yet present in your physical memory. So here we'll set that bit as invalid. So whenever you are trying to access this particular page, you will understand that this particular, so the corresponding bit here is zero indicating that it is invalid. You will not be able to access the data because the page is not present in that particular physical memory. Now, we have a case where uh, you want to share the data among multiple users. So in that case, what we do is here we are taking an example of an editor. 
uh, and uh, this is a software and this code we call it as re-entrant code re-entrant code is nothing but i'm not going to modify the code i'm just use the code as it is so even use if i have three users assume even if uh, they these particular users have to just use this data they have to just execute it and get the output but they cannot make any changes but for example i'm writing uh, so you have these three editors which are only for uh, not changing you cannot change the code you have to use them as it is but while you want to use the data you can use your own data so process p1 can use its own data process p3 can its own use data and this can use the data when you see the page table and each process will have its own page table so when you see the page table of the re-entrant code the code which cannot be modified all of them have been referring to the same frame numbers so editor one will be stored so editor one is stored in frame number three editor two is stored in frame number four editor three is stored in frame number six so all of them are in each of the page table the first three values will be same because they are using the same code you are not going for multiple replicas of it and coming to the data since each one has its own data they can be stored in different location depending upon the availability of the frames so by what do you understand by this even if 40 users or 50 users want to use the data at the same time you are only providing the separate location for the data but not for the total uh, uh, values or the total programs which are being needed so we'll be moving on to the next topic in the next class